hide and seek masters or rarest achievement in Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach. Considering it's unlocked by only 3% of players, you'd be forgiven if you thought this was a difficult achievement to obtain, but it's actually quite simple. All you need to do is beat the game without using any hiding spots. There is just one glaring issue. You get unlimited attempts. With enough trial and error, you can push your way to the end of the game fairly easily. So that's why I decided to up the stakes. I'm adding a new layer to this achievement. Can you beat Hide and Seek Master without using any save stations and without dying? Attempt number 1. We begin inside the room of Freddy Fazbear's. Now quick tip, if you lower the voice volume to about 0%, you can actually skip this entire opening dialogue. As to why, I do not know, but it does numb the pain of having to wait in this room just a little bit. After this very long back and forth, we're given a fast watch and we're able to leave the room. Yes, I see you little save station. No, 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 we shall not be accessing your fine ass this evening. We walk through the vents and see my Roblox character feeling herself up in the mirror, but nobody likes a peeping Tom, especially when that peeping Tom is underage, so we'll keep moving. We free Freddy and he takes us down into the basement, where we see that the pizzeria has a superhero infestation. Yes, it seems Spider-Man is doing his own side quest, so we'll stay out of his way for now. Unfortunately, this joyride is cut short when Freddy's fastballs run out of fast liquid and he has to recharge. Conveniently, Chica is in the next room also, but we're able to distract the silly goose with a couple of pain cans before... Okay, that was a bit of a fluke, won't happen again. Attempt number 2. Turns out you have to sneak past the stupid duck using a little feature known as Crouch. Now this is news to me because I was under the impression that the AI in this game was too dumb to even figure out how to walk up a flight of stairs. But nevertheless, we continue. Exit Freddy's room, say hello to Vanessa, and this time, sneak past the garbage eating turkey. Now we enter a chase sequence and fun fact. Monty the Crocodile will actually match your speed during this quote unquote chase sequence. However, once Chica shows up, you do in fact have to haul ass up the laggiest flight of stairs known to man. We then sneak past the garbage eating homeless woman once more, who has now showcased her ability to teleport, only for the doors to close on us. Now this is not exactly ideal, but luckily we have Freddy on our side, and friendship is a powerful thing ladies and gentlemen. And look at that, it seems she's teleported once again, amazing. I'm able to make use of the cameras and we skillfully get our hands on this here daycare pass. It is here we meet up with a sex offender named Sun. Now as to why any parent would let their child within a 50 mile vicinity of this creep is beyond me, but I digress. We get our hands on this security badge but unfortunately the lights go out and Sun does not like that one bit. Now in order to progress we have to turn on 5 generators. The only problem is these generators are hidden within the confines of this playground. Now I still hear you wondering, well how is that a problem? Well you see, this playground is an absolute fucking maze. It twists and turns and lies to you more than your ex-girlfriend. I'm able to turn on a few generators but in the end, I succumb to the maze and I get molested. Attempt number 3, sat through this dialogue, ran from this fool, got chased, snuck past the fool again, got locked in, snuck past the fool, went into the toilet to take a massive shit, then went over to the actual massive shit known as the daycare. And this time I smartly scoped out the playground, making a mental note of where each generator was. This proved to be an effective strategy and I was able to get the lights back on fairly easily. All was well in the world and from now on we could finally start getting some meaningful progression over and done with. We recharged Freddy, said hello to this thick abomination, and saw that we had two options. Now it's worth noting that I didn't actually remember how to play the damn game. I was just cruising along hoping I could get enough information from my fast watch to at least jog my memory as to how I was supposed to progress. But as you'll see, this ended up being my eventual downfall. I decided to go over to El Chips where I ran into Roxy. She had taken a break from checking herself out to find my sweet behind. Now unfortunately it is here I would suffer the consequences of not knowing what the actual fuck I was doing. Because even though I had my eyes on the vent, it was not enough to stop this determined staff bot from giving me a big kiss which subsequently resulted in Roxy putting an end to attempt number 3. Okay, there seems to be a slight issue. As a wise man once said, clarity is essential. Knowing exactly what you want builds your self-confidence immeasurably. Our ultimate end goal was to reach 6am, and the entire shit show so far had only resulted in one hour of time passing by. We needed to get to 6am, and I was not about to trial and error my way to victory. So instead, I decided to devise a plan. To the drawing board. Now here is a list of every major objective that will get us one step closer to that sweet sweet 6am. We've already worked out how to get to 1am, so here's the rest. In order to get to 6am, we need to use the vent, locate the loading dock, find out the loading dock is fucked, meet back up with Freddy who's drunk out of his mind, activate the parts and service elevator, watch Freddy get taken away by the pedophile, shit our pants in parts and service, play space invaders, get some cocaine, give the duck cocaine, kill the duck, take the duck's voice box and give it to Freddy, prepare this robot so we can play Mario Kart, have a party with the DJ, kill the dog lady, take her eyes, give Freddy the eyes and run to the exit while being chased by your average discord moderator. Seems simple enough, okay? It's time to get this shit done.
Attempt number four. Now that we had an idea of what we were supposed to do, I was confident that this was going to be a piece of cake. We went through the usual bullshit and I made it into the vent. Now right here, we ended up having a close call with Chica. But luckily for us, there are other ways to hide without using the traditional hiding spots. Yes, some would say these methods are actually much more effective. We get trapped in an office, but luckily we're able to distract Chica with a delectable Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. From here, we make it out onto the loading dock, but unfortunately our security pass does not allow us clearance for this particular exit. And so we're told to regroup with Freddy in hopes of hatching a new plan. So we sneak our way over to that furry son of a bitch, only to see that he's blackout drunk behind Roxy's raceway. You were supposed to be helping me out, Freddy. How could you? He sends us on another quest to find another goddamn security badge, and at this point, ladies and gentlemen, yes, this is what Five Nights at Freddy's security breach is all about. Going from one area to another in this massive fucking pizza plex. I mean, sure, the place is absolutely stunning, but for gosh sakes, Freddy, how are you going to make a little boy run around for six hours straight? This place is far too big. But we must not complain. No, we must stay focused. We reach the infamous part of the game, where Freddy tells us to vent. Only I'm quite disappointed to find out that's not actually what he said. Oh well, at least he's a little bit sober now. We plug this bad boy in and make our way down to parts and service so Freddy doesn't pass out. Unfortunately, this pile of shit shows up and he ends up knocking the shit out of our boy, dragging him away, presumably, to his quote-unquote playpen. Now this is where things get freaky. Parts and service. These bad boys right here will move around if you don't look at them, but stand completely still if you do look at them. I wasn't sure how to approach this, I couldn't hide, so I had to move as quickly and as precisely as I could. Unfortunately, I ended up getting cornered, because it turns out this place is a fucking maze as well, and we ended up meeting our sad demise. Attempt number 5. Things might seem grim, but don't worry, for there is hope. Even though this game is quite long and tedious, things do in fact get easier once you get your hands on the Phaser Blaster. We were able to glide on back to where we died, but this time I had actually researched how to properly beat this godforsaken level, and I was able to confidently smack the ever-living shit. Just kidding, these things are still terrifying. I grabbed what I needed and ran back to Freddy as quickly as my little legs would carry me. Here we can see Vanessa reenacting her deepest fetishes, torturing a poor defenseless robot. Now before any of you in the comments start to sympathize with Mr. Fastballs, please let me remind you that this is the same goddamn piece of metal that terrorized the generation for almost a decade. And one game does not change that, no matter how likable he may seem. Was that the bite of 87? Anyways, we now get a slight break and we go on to play a fun little minigame in order to win this Glock 19. Now one of the reasons this challenge is a challenge is because the animatronics are very much broken. They are largely unpredictable beings. And as a result, having some form of retaliation against them is very much essential when it comes to cruising through this challenge. As we can see here, Chica has spotted me. But instead of chasing me, Roxy takes her place and she teleports behind me. Luckily, both these fools have the attention span of a TikTok user. This is one instance where bad AI has worked in my favor, but I knew it was only a matter of time until my luck inevitably ran out. This is why I held the Phaser Blaster in such high regard. But unbeknownst to me at the time of recording this video, recently in a not so recent batch note, it was revealed that said Phaser Blaster received a minor nerf. Rather than fix the cyberpunk levels of intelligence possessed by these animatronics, Steel Wool decided to slap me across the balls and instead nerf my only weapon of defense. Regardless, next on the agenda was to decommission Chica. Unfortunately, while doing so, she takes us down into the back rooms with her. Now we're below the pizza flex, and this place is freaky. Look at all the freaky shit they got down here. Also, as to why there are generators placed in the middle of nowhere is completely beyond me. I'm not an architect or anything, but I don't think it was a wise idea to build on top of hollow ground. But alas, we continue on and get a sick new upgrade for our boy Freddy in the process. We're now inching closer and closer to that sweet 6am, and we only have a few more inconveniences, I, I mean tasks, to complete. First, we visit my waifu's raceway and steal this man's head. From here, it's as simple as making our way onto the dance floor and repairing the robot. But I had no idea how wrong I was. I had severely underestimated how difficult this task would be. Remember when I said we needed to party with the DJ? Well, it was time to rock and roll because the security alarm went off. The place was now crawling with narcs. The entire security team had flooded the area, and due to the piss poor lighting and all the shit in my way, I would unfortunately succumb to Monty's bullshit. I was frustrated. While only mere minutes have passed for you all, I had been attempting this challenge for hours. I had grown tired and angry, so I went to bed that night but couldn't sleep, because I knew deep down, I reeked of defeat. So I went and grabbed myself a warm glass of milk and hibernated for 12 hours. And when I awoke the next morning, I knew. It was time. I proceeded to practice the Music Man boss fight for the next few minutes before suiting up for attempt number 6. The final attempt? Maybe. Who knows. This time you could see the improvement. I was zooming through every part of the game like it was a toddler in the middle of the road. I was confident and I knew I had this bitch in the bag. I made it back to the Music Man boss fight and grabbed him by the nuts and told him not today. Like I said in The Last of Us, I'm not that great at stealth, so I said fuck stealth 
and ran through every last moron in my goddamn way. And just like that, I had successfully repaired the driver assist bot. I was thrilled. I took this bad boy down to Foxy's raceway and proceeded to smash right into her the same way I would advise you to smash that like button. I proceeded to take her eyes, but she got back up. My god, if only I had that level of determination. Like a salmon swimming against the current, she pressed on, intent on killing me. Now you might think the smartest play would be to lay low and sneak faster, but you are absolutely wrong. The smartest play is and always was to run around like a madman, always remember that. But now we had Roxy's eyes. We upgraded Freddy one last time and it was now officially 5.50. 6am was nearing fast. We rushed to the doors with a discord moderator chasing after us. But as I locked eyes with Freddy, something happened. He told me he couldn't come with me. I had realized something. Freddy was always there with me. Every hour of this goddamn challenge when I wanted to quit, Freddy was always there for me. All I had to do was press Q and he'd be there. Sometimes. I could open my skin. It was in that moment that I decided no. I could not leave him. We had been through so much together. We had to get the true ending. And so, we set out to do just that. Now in order to get the true ending, you need to open a gate, and in order to open the gate, you need Monty's claws. Now how do we get Monty's claws? We kill him. We killed Chica in the kitchen, Roxy in her raceway, so naturally we'd go to Monty's golf course to kill him, right? No, you have to go back to the daycare, get this pass, get chased by naked people, go into a gym, solve a maze, realize you don't have the controls for the maze, go to Monty Golf, get the controls for the maze, come back to the gym, solve the maze, and go onto the catwalk in Monty Golf. Seems fair. Now as for whether you would even call this a boss fight or not, it's entirely up to you. Because Steel Wool used up all their brain power making the pizza plexus reflections, all the boss fights in the game are extremely lackluster, and Monty's is no no exception. That's because his AI is dumbed down by a considerable amount. Oh no, he sees you standing directly in front of him. Don't worry, he doesn't care. He'll just run around like a brainless moron. Anywho, now we have Monty's claws and Freddy is now officially decked out like a Power Ranger. It's high time we take this bad boy downstairs and beat the ever-living shit out of William Afton. We descend and say hello to this unholy abomination before the floor beneath us cracks open and we see the main man himself. This is what it's been leading up to, but ladies and gentlemen, I'm very sorry to inform you that the hype was in fact not worth it. As much as I would love to show you a kick-ass boss fight, the footage I actually have is me just sitting in a corner, pressing a button from time to time, and making sure this tentacle doesn't touch me. So instead, I ask you to close your eyes and imagine. On the right side, Freddy Fazballs and his adopted son. And on the left side, Springtrap in his prime condition. Going toe-to-toe -to, -toe to see who's the best. Thank you for watching.